Hi, I'm Dr. K. Patel. In this video, I'm going to be giving a short presentation about the pillars of imaging and videography and giving you some hints on how to achieve that with your top consulate lab. Your setup is really important when trying to get the best images. I'd recommend as large a monitor as possible and an adjustable arm can be very useful. A wireless mouse will save your back. It allows you to adjust the settings of ImageNet 6 from your desk or from beside your slit lamp. You're also going to want an intimate understanding of your slit lamp. ImageNet 6 is the patient management system for TopCon. And it's from here that you will control your slit lamp and adjust the settings. Once you have picked a patient, you can access the imaging module using either the acquisition tab or the DC4 button. The DC4 has default settings which can be tweaked as per personal preference. Personal settings for specific imaging tasks can also be named and saved. For me, the default settings work well for most things. In the most basic terms, photography and videography is about light and focus. To achieve focus, you need to set up your oculars. This can be done with or without your spectacles, and you want to do it each eye individually. Firstly, rotate the eyepiece clockwise to achieve maximum plus, which should be very blurry, and then rotate anti-clockwise until the object is first in focus. This should mean that you are minimally accommodating. And this is best achieved with the focusing rod, if you can find it. This is also a great way to check that the viewing and illumination systems are coupled about a fixed focusing point. You can use patient eyelids or lashes, but it's quicker to make sure you are ready to go at the beginning of the day. Here is an example of front surface drying on a scleral lens. And this is fogging in the reservoir. That's only a difference of 300 microns. And if you are not correctly focused, you will struggle to pick up the subtle details. So how do we control the amount of light reaching the subject? You can use a rear stat, adjust the slit width or slit height, or change the neutral density filter. You'll remember from uni that different light sources have different color temperatures, with daylight being around 5,000 Kelvin. Halogen sits at about 3,000 Kelvin, and LED can be anywhere from 3,000 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin. The color of the light source will impact the image appearance. Within the system is a digital sensor, and this can compensate for the light source used. Halogen tends to be warmer or yellower. LED lights tends to appear cooler and has more light towards the blue end of the spectrum. This is useful for maximizing scatter to view subtle abnormalities such as anterior chamber cells. Here's another example. This is a patient with go cells in the anterior vitreous following the resolution of a vitreous hemorrhage. The image on the left is using an LED bulb and the right is using a halogen bulb. Hopefully, you can immediately see the difference in the ability to de detect and image small objects. And with that, I can finally get to the principles of good imaging. These are aperture size, shutter speed, and ISO value. And these are the pillars of good imaging. As with your pupils, aperture size will control depth of field, and this will impact the amount of light entering the system. Many slit lamps have a fixed aperture, so, in general, we don't need to worry about this too much. But the smaller the aperture size, the more light will be required. Shutter speed is akin to blink speed and is mostly measured in fractions of a second. Well, it is for what we're going to be doing. Decreasing the shutter speed, opening longer, will increase the amount of light reaching the sensor. But this also increases 
the risk of motion blur. In these images, all that has changed is the shutter speed. As I speed up the shutter, the image becomes dimmer. You only want to increase the shutter speed if you are trying to image something that is moving fast. On ImageNet 6, this can be adjusted from the drop-down menu at the top of the screen. Usually, I stick to 1 over 30. If needs be, I will decrease the shutter speed, increasing the exposure time. For those of you that are old enough to remember film, the concept is the same. The higher the ISO value, the higher the sensitivity of the sensor. Increasing the sensor sensitivity will cause an increase in noise or graininess to the image. The control for this is also at the top. Where possible, I keep the ISO as low as, as I can to give a clearer and sharper image. This is a video to demonstrate the impact of changing the ISO value on what can be imaged and the quality of the image. As the ISO goes up, so does the sensitivity and you can start to see the cells in the anterior chamber. But the image becomes grainier. You use the same principles for taking images as you do for recording video. This is an example of fluorescein images. Increasing the ISO gives a brighter image, but it is less sharp. I will usually change the shutter speed before changing the ISO, and even then, try to keep it as low as possible. Now you know the basics, what adjustments can you make to enhance your imaging? Firstly, the diffuser. When taking lower magnification images, the diffuser allows an even spread of light over the subject. This is an example of an eye with no diffuser, and this is it with the diffuser in place. Note that the object is less washed out with bright reflections, and you are seeing a more accurate representation of the eye. Secondly, changing magnification. You're going to need to remember that increasing the magnification will need increased illumination. Thirdly, use the excitation and barrier filters to enhance detection and improve imaging. The three main ones we use are sodium fluorescein. This should be viewed with a cobalt blue filter and Rattan 12 barrier. Topcon have a special cobalt filter that is a bit turquoisey and a special barrier filter. They are designed to work specifically with the wavelength of the light source. Lysamine green is viewed with white light and you can use a Rattan 92 externally to enhance this. Blood is best viewed with a red free filter. Filters will need increased light. This is cobalt blue without a Rattan 12. The addition of a Rattan filter significantly enhances the areas of staining and pooling. This patient had lost a contact lens and went fishing for it. The image on the left is using the Topcon Blue Exciter filter and barrier. The image on the right using standard cobalt blue with a barrier filter. The Topcon filter barrier combination is about 1.6 times brighter than a regular cobalt blue and Rattan 12. This is a keratoconic patient who is a scleral lens wearer and who had an intrastromal hemorrhage. Notice how more obvious it becomes when you use the red free filter. This is lysamine green, pretty obvious with just white light. Some of the more subtle staining is visible with the Rattan 92 in place. This is the option to have the BG5 module. As mentioned earlier, this can produce background illumination. This is an example of pellucid marginal degeneration with and without background illumination. Or supply an infrared source to allow meibomium gland imaging. This is a lower lid mybography. It's important to remember that changing the alignment of the optics 
allows different viewing techniques and perspectives. Specular reflection, allowing assessment of the corneal endothelium. This is a patient who has had corneal crosslinking and PRK, and then was unfortunate enough to have foreign body trauma. In this view, you can see corneal thinning and edema. Uncoupling the illumination system from the viewing system will allow you to offset the light position from the focus point. Very useful for retroillumination and sclerotic scatter. In summary, you want to keep the room as dark as possible. Advise the patient that it may be bright. When focusing, it's easier to pull backwards. Take multiple images. The joys of digital media mean it's easy to delete anything that's not worked. In the beginning, keep a diary of what works. Higher ISO, with or without a diffuser for sodium fluorescein imaging. And use the images for patient education, colleague education and practice promotion. In reality, you need to get to know your equipment and good images will come with combination of settings and practice. Thank you.